Change that has bounded us for so long. This is Dwayne Stevens from August Town and in tune to worldareggae.com. Bless up, bless up. Hi, this is World of Reggae and I'm Jenny Fire and I'm here with Dwayne Stevenson. How are you? I'm good, I can't complain. Yeah. All is well. Okay, I just watched your birthday two days ago. Yeah, it's something it, like that. Yeah. The thing is, it happens every year at the same time, man. <laughs> but you didn't celebrate it? No, it was good. I enjoyed the day, you know. Um, mostly spent it with family and, and close friends, you know, so it was worth it. Elated, very strong. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, I heard every album you make, you try to um, you go for the process of the growth. Yes, I do. Um, what growth can we notice on the... Black gold album instead of the. Well, you know, I, I can, first. I can merely tell you um, what I think, but you know, I guess everyone will have to listen and judge for themselves. You know, um, I definitely went for um, wider perspectives. You know, um, in terms of production, I, I used two relatively new producers to, to myself in terms of people working with, in um, Christopher Birch, also Flavor McGregor of um, Flavor Music. You know. Yeah. So um, that's that's two things, and definitely in terms of you know just just the outlook. You know, I mean, I've been to so many places since the last album that I wanted to put in a little of what I picked up along the way in the music. You know, so that's what I did. So, um, I, but I wouldn't be sure what you would think if you listen. But okay. I'm sure it'd be interesting. And your personal growth? Yeah, I mean, I have. You know, as I said, um, the world has changed since since from August. So you know. It has changed much, and I changed with it because you know, if you don't change, then, then you're left behind. You know. Yeah. Um, on the album is the song called Rescue, featuring Grimes. Rescue me. Rescue me. Yeah. How did the song come together? Well, I wanted a, a, a lighter feel. You know, many times you know you're singing reggae music, it's always it tend to get dull and, and a bit heavy at times. You know, so I wanted to put a spin on things. You know, good music. You know, great vocals, of course, and which is why Gramps was invited to the song because you know I thought that he would have brought great energy, and, and I, I was spot on. Okay. You know, but we just wanted fun music, nevertheless. You know, good music, but but fun, without losing that quality. I think you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And you don't give yourself musical barriers. Can you explain that? No. Um. I think if you lock yourself in a box, then you're not only really locking yourself in, you're locking people out, mm -hmm. you know? So I wouldn't necessarily want to say that, you know, I will only confine myself to doing this form of music because I think there, there are people who love different. Life is variety. Mm -hmm. So I try to give people variety without, you know, straying too far from my roots. Okay. Um, yeah, besides a singer, you also a songwriter. You write songs for Jacqueline. Yeah, I've done some. Some more, Luciano. Luciano and, and a few, well, not so named mm -hmm. artists. You know? <laughs> local artists. Yeah, local artists. Um, but it, it's something that I, I do have a lot of passion for, and I try to get in as much in, not as much as I used to these days, since I'm running all over the place. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, I can get some more time away and get back to it. Is there an artist you want to write for? If you have a great voice, good personality, and some direction, I probably want to write for you. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't write for everybody. Right? Um, you know, first you have to find people who share the same values as you do, because you know it makes no sense trying to write a, a song for someone that you have nothing in common with. You know, because it would be pushing you out of your comfort zone. And if you're out of your comfort zone, especially when you're writing for other people. And it might not come out sounding too well, you know, and it might not do anybody justice, yourself or the person you're writing for. Yeah, true. And you and Tyrus Riley go way back, but how did you meet? Actually, the first time I went in a studio to, to do um, studio recording, I met him there. I opened the studio door and this, this mad guy running up and down the studio <laughs> screaming out. Okay. And running to Dean and back and forth. It was interesting. Mm -hmm. 
I thought he was sick. <laughs> but apparently he was just very talented. <laughs> you know, but that, that, that's years ago and we've been, you know, friends since, you know, because that same musical bug apparently it beat both of us. I heard you were shy when you were younger on stage. Was it true? Well, I, I never liked getting in front of him. I like one audience at a time, mainly me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I never got out much. You know, I yeah, I was a little bit petrified of the crowd. Okay. But you see, if you lived in Jamaica and you saw what I saw, mm -hmm. then you probably would have been <laughs> petrified too. What did you say? And we we had a reputation down there, you know. Okay. Yeah. Just, just go on and just dial in, like go on the internet and Google Sting. Yeah. And then okay. shine the bottle Sting. And you'll understand exactly what I'm doing. Because he knows. And how did you came over your shyness then? I think it's just a uh, time when I, I got older and, you know, got serious. And then I realized that, you know what? If you're going to go here, you have to be one prepared. And once you're prepared, you're, you find that half the, the, the bottle already won and then if you go out there and you don't perform well chances are you'll be booed mm -hmm. and if you don't go then you never know what will happen and you probably still will be booed so if you're <laughs> gonna go out there be prepared and be your best mm -hmm. good advice <laughs> um yeah before you were internationally known as Dwayne Stevenson you mm -hmm. were in a group called yeah. Toisis. Two Isis yeah is there any chance you're gonna get back together again in the future no, I think everybody has you know, ventured too far off in their own, you know, um, ways. People are not even, not, not everyone is even living in Jamaica anymore, you know, and okay. people are far gone in different directions now, you know, so it was what it was for the time that it was, you know, great experience. I learned a lot while I was there, but, you know, I figured it pretty much did its thing. Okay. Um, yeah, can you tell me more about the food problem? World Food Program is an initiative that um, was brought to me by my manager. You know, she also manages um, the Whalers Band, you know, and it's a part of the Whalers Initiative to always be giving back, you know, and the World Food Program is, is one of the better places to give, you know. Um, everything. First, it's, a, it's, a, it's the largest one, the most effective one, you know, and it speaks much to Africa, which is another passion of mine, you know. African thing and I was invited and you know I jumped at the opportunity you know the little that you can do to make this world a better place and I always jumped to the opportunity because you know I need to have the means or the time to do very much so the time that I get to, to help out I try to you know really get in and be a part of the process of change. Okay. And you make a song about it right? The song is called um, A Step From Mankind it was done by myself uh, and the whalers you know, mainly, mainly the whalers. I was just a, a, a guess on it, but I, you know, I also wrote the song myself on a version of mine called Bolter Solomon. Okay. You know, which is another um, Jamaican artist. You know, um, it was used as a theme song for a walk that they have every year on the 26th of June, just to draw notice to the fact that there are so many kids, especially dying for hunger. Okay. You know, so the fact that it was even chosen for that was such a great. It meant so much to me. Enjoyed it very much. Um, yeah, and you've been invited by Hillary Clinton, right? How was that? It was actually uh, a part of the World Food Program thing. She was being given the George McGowan Award from the World Food Program, which is the highest honor that the, the World Food Program gave. And I was one of about 80 invited guests from all over the world that was there because of work that I had been doing with the World Food Program. So that was, you know, a great event. And I'm glad that I could be a part of that. And do you have any words for, for your fans <laughs> for watching right now? Well, um, thank you very much for listening. You could have been eating pizza or playing tennis. <laughs> and you stuck around and you listened to my music and you came out and you've been supporting my show. So I'm very grateful. Enough blessings and I hope to always be carrying you good wholesome music that you'll enjoy for as long as I'm around. No thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thanks.